In the third edition of the Wealth Creators, we are going to focus on the business of hospitality. Yes, that's correct. It, the, the, the area is booming a whole lot. Several stocks are doing very well, but one particular company from the depths of COVID has done phenomenally well for its shareholders and all the stakeholders is Chalet Hotels. So today I'm in conversation with Sanjay Sethi, who's leading the affairs at Chalet Hotels as MD and CEO. Sanjay, thank Hi. you very much Pleasure for inviting us. Great meeting, what a, what a wonderful lounge you have here. Thank you. So uh, before we talk about Chalet, uh, you know, everybody has got just one thing on his mind. Mm -hmm. In the last four years, this sector has been one of the best performing in terms of growth. Mm -hmm. Shareholders have made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. But are we, what phase of the cycle are we in hospitality right now in your view? So Ajay, you know, we came off a really poor uh, period during COVID. And I think the ramp up after that has been extremely good. Uh, and we believe, at least I strongly believe, that the upcycle is going to be a strong upcycle for us. Um, the visible future that I can predict right now is the basis, the supply side growth that mm -hmm. we're going to happen. And because it's a brick and mortar business, you see supply coming in fairly early. So from that perspective, I have visibility for the next four years. And on, with that as a background, I'm very confident that we've got at least four years of a steady growth phase going ahead. Also, Sanjay, you know what happened was that it used to be an extremely deep cyclical kind of a mm -hmm. space. Five, seven good years and then five, seven very weak kind of year. Mm -hmm. Has over the last five, seven years, COVID onwards, the consumption patterns also of the consumer changed, be it the institutional consumer, which is you know office space, corporate consumer, as well as the individual leisure traveler. Has that also, that composition also changed a whole lot because of which companies such as yours are you know, dissecting the market and coming at with tailor-made solution in hospitality. Well, true. Uh, you know, uh, clearly during COVID and post-COVID, we've seen a, a, a pretty big change in the way the mindset of the young travelers mm. is today. Uh, they're ready to spend more on experiences, uh, sometimes at the cost of savings, which is not a great thing for a country. Uh, but we see that growing quite incrementally. And the millennial generation is clearly hell-bent on getting good experiences and living the life today as against looking for the future. And very rapidly, they're becoming a primary target audience. The Gen Z, which is even next step further from, uh, you know, better than uh, millennials in terms of uh, spending towards experiences, mm -hmm. uh, will probably become a target audience for the five-star hotel industry, maybe five to 10 years down the line. So uh, tell us, uh, you know, Sanjay, you, you've been a hospitality veteran for a very long time. Mm -hmm. There was a time when there were five-star hotels and there were others. Mm -hmm. But has the market also got differentiated a whole lot? For every kind of user, there's a new segment emerging, a new offering emerging. So this fragmentation is actually very good for the growth of the market. It is. It is it's really good because you're giving a lot more, a larger community of the travelers an opportunity to experience good quality of hospitality. Mm. And it's also creating segments within the hotel business, uh, which in their own respective ways, uh, become the enablers for people to invest in or uh, investors to invest in. Mm -hmm. uh, from that perspective, there's now a fairly large size hotel uh, business that's available. I mean, if you look at maybe 15 years back, the total supply in India was about 40,000 rooms, the branded hotel supply. Today's 170,000 rooms. Uh, and a lot of the supply that's come in has been at the upscale to budget and economy segment. Uh, in between is the mid-scale segment. Uh, all of them have seen a lot of growth. Going forward also, I see a supply uh, largely leading towards the mid-scale and budget. Mid, uh, okay. uh, so biggest supply is actually mid to budget is where the big supply is coming. Actually, if you look at the supply side, we're expecting about 11%, uh, or sorry, 9% year-on-year growth for the mm -hmm. next four years. 80% mm -hmm. uh, of that is coming in segments that are at uh, upscale, mid-scale, budget and economy. And how are things looking in the luxury and the premium end? Uh, luxury is probably the least uh, amount of growth on the supply side going forward. So there are two segments that are sit above upscale segment in our hospitality lingo. Sure. Uh, one of them is upper upscale, which is just before above upscale, and then the luxury. So luxury and upper upscale combined together is only going to be 20% of the total new supply that's going to come in. Interesting. So clearly that's a segment that's going to be uh, probably have lower supply side uh, input demand continues to grow at double digits there. So we're seeing a benefit in that segment. Also, mm. I think that's also because 
it's more capital intensive in nature sure. in, that, in that category. So talk to us about uh, you know this entire phenomena that, that the K-shaped recovery, the luxury upscale etc is growing very healthy and very agnostic to pricing but the lower end the more uh, you know value orientation consumer is actually very challenged right now. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that in hospitality as well? No, not really. I think there's enough uh, supply at, the, at all sec okay. categories of hotels. Uh, what has happened, Ajay, very clearly is that there's been premiumization yeah. of the experiences that people want. Mm. And therefore, there's been a move upward in terms of quality of hotels that people want to stay. So how, uh, when you say that you're very fairly confident for the next three, four years at least, mm. the health and the trajectory of growth is comfortable. Where, where is that uh, confidence coming from? As I said, it's, it's, it's a game of supply and demand. Mm. Uh, we see demand staying healthy and a growth pace of demand being between 10 to 11 percent year on year for the next four years. Supply side is significantly lower and that favorable arbitrage that we have between demand and supply Will continue. It gives us the confidence. Which are the regions which are really, is it all correlated to uh, business related demand? Or the leisure and travel is also? I think it's a good mix. What's happening is a lot of the supply is actually coming in the leisure markets and tier two and tier three markets for business travel. Demand continues to be very robust across markets. Uh, so therefore, I believe that tier one markets will continue to do extremely well going forward because the demand sub supply arbitrage is going to be larger there. You know, I was just, uh, in just previously we did a segment with uh, one of the biggest, uh, you know, where the, your wealth managers also in the country and they were telling me that up till now India has seen wealth being concentrated in four to ten big cities in the country. But uh, very convincingly he told me, uh, Ashish Keher of Nuwama, that next B30 in the financial services lingo, the 30, 40 cities beyond metro, the witnessing massive boom in business and travel leisure. Mm -hmm. Can you correlate that or draw some semblances in hospitality? Are there areas or interest or you will see evidence first and then go there? No, no, I think, I think we will see evidence and go there. That's, that's our DNA of, of growth. Um, but you know, Ajay, what's interesting is if we're going to see tier two and tier three cities and tier four actually tertiary cities mm -hmm. also grow, uh, I think it's great for our business because that's my source market. That's not necessarily my base where I'm, I'm supplying my product to the guests. If uh, the, these tier two, tier three, tier four markets, people get more affluent, they'll tend to travel to leisure destinations and bigger cities mm. a lot more. And therefore, consumption of room nights uh, across India will be stronger. Okay, let's uh, talk about business models which are prevalent in the industry. Your group, of course, has a massive legacy and great reputation of a very strong player in the real estate space. Uh, then there are legacy you know, groups like Taj and others, mm. phenomenal work being done, versus a lot of external overseas you know, players who want to come here and capture because India is booming. Sure. How are the Indian players with Indian roots mm -hmm. and business models versus uh, companies who want to partner? How is the, the, uh, you know, the entire sector evolving right now among players? So actually there are two, three things that happen. One is, companies which are brands, mm. which typically are going asset light or asset right as it's called sometimes. And then there are own hotel owners like us who actually are, have a capital intensive business model. We invest in the hotels and the brands get to sign them as managers of those. So hotels. what are the pros and cons of both the So both sides, models? I think the uh, brands is, uh, because it is asset light in nature, the fee that they get out of each hotel is significantly lower than the contribution of EBITDA to the hotel owning company. Right, as a reference point, the fee for a budget hotel per year, per room, ranges around a 30,000 rupee mark, that's all. And it can go up to one and a half lakh rupees for luxury hotels per year. Uh, the contribution of a bit to, to hotel owners is about 25 to 30 lakh rupees minimum at the luxury end. It goes up to 55 lakh rupees in some cases. Now, let me flip this around. From our perspective, how does it uh, count? If I was today to decide to double my bid up from where it stands today mm -hmm. on an asset light strategy and pace it as per the best hotel companies in the country sure. that I will sign as many hotels as them going forward mm -hmm. with a brand in my portfolio, it will take me 20 years to double, double my bid up. Better. But I can do that on the back of an asset intensive strategy in maybe three to four years. And you know, the popular, uh, you know, Thing, but belief is that asset light is better for return ratios. Here and evidence is that hotel owners also can have very healthy return ratios. Okay, let's go slightly deeper in that. But 
it also comes that not every hotel owner will be able to do it, right? It is no, I player think to player be, efficiency yeah. will. I think the key elements to hotel uh, be, hotels being successful, one of course location. You know, it's it's a primary uh, uh, requirement of getting that right. If you get it wrong, even by sometimes be even a half a kilometer. Uh, you can be toast for, for life. Clearly. Uh, so you've got to get the location perfect and spot on. And we are fortunate that 10 out of our 10 hotels are today located in locations which do extremely well. Um, that's one. Second, you've got to build it right. Mm -hmm. you, it's a capital intensive business. If you give a free hand to everyone who's involved in the development cycle of the, pro of the hotel, you can sometimes end up with a very expensive hotel on a per Creative basis. independence can actually cost you a it whole can. lot. It can. So there has to be control mechanisms. You've got to make sure that the hotels don't cost you more than about one to one and a half crores per key on the mm. development cost, and that there's land costs attached to it, which is separate. See, land is a separate matter, but mm. what are the ranges from, so you, you told us that one to one and a half uh, crore per key is the standard. No, that's not the standard. That's what we've been developing hotels. Okay, the, but otherwise, uh, what's the industry? So average? I think the industry in the five-star luxury space is, is uh, building hotels between two crores and uh, up to three and a half crores in some cases. Wow, uh, double of what you've been achieving, right? So, uh, Ajay, you know, in a return of capital employed formula, your denominator is how much you build the hotel at, right? True. So if you don't get that right, uh, and because that stays with you for life, you can very easily go wrong in this business. Mm. So you've got to get that right, and I think we are blessed that uh, my predecessors in the promoter group in the past have been very conscious of this and de have developed hotels which are efficiently designed and efficiently built. Let's uh, talk about and I carry that forward going forward. I'm, of course, you are. I mean, you are in silent period, so I won't go too much into details of numbers. But your stated numbers, if they are any evidence, we can see industry beating margins and high good growth and all of that. Uh, let's talk about what is the biz differentiated business model of Chalet. How are you achieving, you know, very high industry margins? Mm -hmm. How are you achieving uh, efficiency as far as? room, uh, average cost of room is concerned, decadal high room rates, mm -hmm. uh, and what, are, what is the direction it may take from here, and the cost control is the differentiating, what is the differentiating business model at Chalet? I think the foundation of all this is that you are getting to this business for creating returns. If that's your mindset, you're likely to find ways of doing it more efficiently mm -hmm. than others. Uh, if you get in there and, uh, for a reason that I want a hotel in this city or this location, and there's no other criteria to it, you could get it wrong very easily. So from our perspective, we look at two or three things. One is CapEx. Mm -hmm. CapEx per hotel is critical for us because as I said earlier, it is going to stay with you for life. Uh, so the denominator on return of capital employed is determined by how much you spend per room in a hotel. You've got to get that right. And that comes out of two or three things. One, designing it efficiently. Number two, building every square foot on an efficient cost per square foot. Uh, and that co combination, and you know, I think we're blessed with the fact that we are able to develop hotels at very efficient uh, square foot per key. And let me give you a reference yeah, points here. Uh, our JW Marriott Sahar was built in, opened in 2015. Our total gross built up area per room is about 1150 square foot per room there. We went on to improve this further later on. I'll give you a reference here later. But um, we were in a market where other hotels in our competitive market were somewhere between 1800 to 2500 square foot per room. Now, if you have a 45 to 50% advantage on your capex cost, which is your denominator of return of capital employed, which is going to live you're going to live with for life. Yeah. You've got an immense amount of uh, price flexibility, and because we're building our hotels right and they're building them well, they also continue to be market leaders. So the numerator mm. is driven by the revenues that we crack, which is at the leading end of the com competitive market, and denominator is because we build them more efficiently. So in this equation, what is an in your control? Land costs are not in your control, or Sourcing. Uh, well, I think land costs also in your control. You've got to decide where you're going to build it or not. because mm. it needs to be viable. And if I, for today, if I was to buy land today in Mumbai and build a hotel, it'll never be viable at today's real estate prices. Mm. So it, we are blessed that 60% of our portfolio is in Mumbai already. And, and legacy we've got, portfolio. And we've got barriers to entry. Sanjay, uh, I want to talk a little more about, uh, you know, sweating out the asset better. Mm -hmm. Design is one part. Mm -hmm. What about other costs? Like, I mean, we all know that whether the occupancies are high or low, a certain level of manpower is required there. Mm -hmm. uh, what about utility costs? Because op cost of operation is also a big factor. Sure. And uh, in fact, in a, if I may call it facilities such as hospitality, mm -hmm. these are the two biggest factors. Mm -hmm. How are you keeping it under check or under control? So Ajay, I think two or three things. Number one, we uh, obviously try and uh, sweat the land part of the real estate asset more 
uh, with a lot with a very strong focus on that front we are uh, uh, as I said, looking at r square foot per key. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, if we have more FSI and the land is a larger parcel, mm -hmm. we'd like to put alternate asset classes on that land because it does two, three things for us. Number one, I'm sweating my land. Mm -hmm. The new asset class is coming at zero land cost because I've already spent that for the hotel plot, or hotel building that I've spent. And number two, they become complementary because an office asset, for example, mm -hmm. will generate demand of room nights. Mm. So in our numbers, I mean, when I look at it, I typically look at about a million square foot generating 30 rooms per day of demand, new demand for my hotels if the office is in that location. So your business model is slightly differentiated. It has a very good, uh, you know, mix of office space as well. And you would like to keep it that way in the next two to three years? Wherever yeah. I have opportunity to sweat the asset, I will use that opportunity. And let me again come back to that reference of 1150 square foot. We are now with the new hotels at about 800, 850 per room, mm -hmm. which is again, we're con constantly improving efficiencies there. Um, when you have low, low square footage of room, mm -hmm. uh, it is helping a denominator, as I mentioned earlier. Mm -hmm. Numerator is helped, of course, by the location, so therefore your revenue premium that you get. But more importantly, the square footage that you build tends to affect your cost very positively. Okay. If you're building less, your number of people required to run that square footage is lower. Uh, uh, I can give you a reference point here. The metric that we look at in the industry mm. is number of employees employed per room basis. Because every hotel is differently sized in terms of number of rooms. We look at this metric as a common metric. Uh, Chalet is operating at roughly about 0.93 employees per room. The industry is between 1.6 to 2.2 employees per room. At the higher end, it could be also three employees per room. But we've sort of institutionalized this efficiency, sure. this productivity of employees in the system very efficiently pre-COVID and now more efficiently post-COVID. Sure. So and similarly, I just want to complete yeah, this, sure. sorry for that. Hmm. Uh, but the less square foot also results in the second cost that you mentioned earlier, the utility costs, right? Less area, therefore lower air conditioning bills, lower electricity bills, lower maintenance bills. But you are having a lot of uh, endeavors I see as far as reducing your utility bills via smart engineering. You have a, a element of renewables also coming in now, which is, being, I saw your margins, I mean, they're like, uh, over 40, 45 percent, depending on you're talking about quarter or yearly. You have uh, upward bias uh, because of these measures are being inst institutionalized in the operations. No, so look, uh, it's a co journey of constant uh, okay. improvements. Uh, you know, at in 2018, 19, when we went public, 19 actually, 19 January, uh, January I remember. February, we were doing yeah. our shows before that. A uh, lot of people asked us, "Listen, you already at very high <laughs> margins. Right. Is there any headroom for further growth?" And we've grown 400 bips since then. Yes. So we're constantly evolving and improving. But you our see, minds. there is scope for doing think, a lot of stuff. I think there's, there. we, there's no time to rest at any given point of time. I think every day we make an effort to mm. improving margins. Your last stated numbers were, again, you know, decadal high uh, rates, and numbers are very healthy. So I was talking to some of your large shareholders, just taking feedback before. One is getting a sense that even the QIP, uh, your last QIP fundraise saw a very healthy subscription. One is getting a sense that the business momentum and the efforts which you're taking, and of course the industry tailwind, can double your business in three, three and a half years. Is that a fair estimate to take? Uh, yes, for Chalet. I yeah, think if Chalet. I was to look at an internal aspiration, I would like to uh, look, and this is not a guidance in sure, any way, sure. but uh, it is something that's more internal, uh, is I would like to see us doubling our uh, uh, p and hmm. in about three years' time from now. So what are the three, four biggest areas? As a CEO, I'm mean, sure you are a very hands-on guy, but you have business leaders in your team. But what are the three, four strategic areas of focus from the board level for your individual uh, you know, uh, kind of focus area where 80% sure. of your time is actually spent on these three, four big focus so areas? So I think clearly my, my board gives me key result areas that are relevant, sure. right? And I think to a large extent, that's a reflection of where I focus most of my time on. Um, driving operating efficiency is one of them. Second is uh, growth, and on the growth side, efficient growth is critical for us. So it's not just not growth. just top line growth. It's just not just not just top line growth. It is uh, inorganic growth by adding new assets yes. and inventory to our portfolio. Yeah, I just saw that. So but more importantly, than, important than that is adding that efficiently. So look, we are spoiled by our own performance to some extent. Anything that we take on. Uh, we will take on very carefully to ensure it doesn't dilute our performance in any way. Mm. So everything that we add going forward will actually add to the margins that we have 
as against being dilutive in nature. I want to talk about the Duke's uh, asset which you recently acquired. Just for reference point, how much of your growth from here on would be organic and uh, are you always scouting? Because your, your balance sheet allows you that. Mm -hmm. You are scouting for opportunistic assets where previous asset owners are not being able to run it and take it over, refurbish it and mm -hmm. add to your growth? So look, the Dukes, sell, the people who sold Dukes to us, the, the reasons are very different. Uh, but yes, we, we our intent is to sort of uh, elevate the, pro the, the property first mm. and then sweat the asset more by adding more inventory. Just to give you a reference point again, Dukes we acquired at, uh, which when it required it was 80, it had 80 rooms, mm. which needed some serious renovation. Uh, we were now expanding to 145 rooms from 80, again sweating the asset. Uh, and we're going to position it very differently. From 80 to 145? Yes, we added 65 new, room, uh, new rooms. It's work in progress right now. Uh, but more importantly, we want to also elevate the, 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 the asset mm. and to be able to drive higher ARRs out of that. Uh, if you ask me what's my internal aspirations for uh, Dukes, mm -hmm. uh, we were operating at about 8,000 rupees uh, pre-renovation. Yeah. I would like to position it around the 14, 15,000 rupee wow. price point uh, that's post renovation. And you see demand there? I, I don't, demand no, is that's the least of my worries. So are we talking, you're at what, the run rate is about 3,000 keys right now operating and work in progress of course. Mm -hmm. Are we talking about a number of closer to 5,000 uh, keys operating in the next three, four years? So we've got uh, roughly 3,050 odd rooms yeah. operating right now. Yeah. And close to 900 under development. Working so that progress. takes us to about 4,000. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to see us get to a 5,000 number sometime in the future. Um, and I'd like to basically say that at some point of time, I should be able to come back to the market and say my operating portfolio plus pipeline is 5,000 rooms. And I'm hoping it will not be too uh, distant of future. Excellent. Thank you very much, Sanjay, chatting with us today, talking about the industry and also telling us what Chalet Hotels is all about. Thank you so Thank much you for your time. Great Thank chatting. You Thank, Thank you. you. If you like this video, then like, share and subscribe to ET Now.